right, this is going to be fun, I think. It's going to stir the pot once again, and it's going to make me oh so popular, I'm very sure. What's up, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with the answer to the question that was posed last night. What, oh what, is the shit list? Ah... Uh... Guys, I think it's pretty fair to say that I've been more positive than most people in the YWC about the product recently. That's because, unlike most people, unlike the ones that follow the trend and unlike the ones that shit on something because it seems to be the trendy thing to do that day, I don't think WWE's that much in the shitter. I actually see more promise in the WWE right now than I have in a long time. But, and here's the but, and it's fun to say but at the end of a positive sentence, isn't it? I would be lying, I would be hand on heart lying to all of you, my loyal listeners, viewers, whatever you would love to refer to yourselves as. Coincidentally, um, if anybody has sort of a cool name that I can give to my viewers, my fans, whatever, you know, I haven't ever really been able to come up with anything that good. Uh, <laughs> people, you know, Somebody suggested the Spaz Army, and that just sounds really, really played out, and I wasn't able to come up with anything better. So if anybody has any suggestions on what you would like to call yourselves, or what you think I should call you, please pop it in the box below, but that is not the purpose of this video. I'm not going to lie to you guys. As much promise as I see in the WWE, as much as I love a lot of what's happening in the WWE, there still is shit. Now, how can I properly express it in a fair way? in a constructive manner that doesn't just look like me coming up and bitching and falling into line with seemingly the rest of the people in the YWC. Well, there's a bit of structure when I do a Raw review, isn't there? There's, you know, I do the rundown, I do my thoughts, I do my, you know, my score, which is all the things I liked in general about the show, things I agreed with, things that I thought were good moves, etc., and the fail, which was obviously the opposite. Uh, eventually, from the score and the fail, I developed the MVP which is ironic because by the time I had developed this channel, MVP wasn't in the WWE anymore. That would have been really, really great. And then, and then I started doing my Fave Fives. I did a Fave Five for TNA, I did a Fave Five for WWE, I did a Fave Five Divas and all that sort of thing, right? And uh, my Fave Five for WWE, for better or for worse, Punk, who's still doing great, regardless of what some people out there have to say. Orton, I could say the same about Miz, who is on the rise as much as it pisses everybody else off. Um, Ziggler, who's going to be the next World Heavyweight Champion. And Rhodes, who's part of the tag team situation at the moment. Now, that's my fave five. And I've stuck with them, basically, for better or for worse. And incorporated in my Raw reviews, and sometimes in my pay-per-view reviews, uh, what kind of a night my fave five had. So it seems I'm missing a section, because, you know, the score is positive, the MVP is positive, the Fave 5 is usually positive, uh, the fail is the fail, but even that I try to be somewhat constructive with. Now, what's missing? What's missing is pretty much, you know, score has fail. I need an opposite to the Fave 5, and that's the shit list. And here's where I lay out the shit list. Before I go, this is going to be five. Like my Fave 5 is, like my second tier Fave 5 is, like my TNA Fave 5 is and all that. It just seems to work. Now, honorable mention. These are people that are not, that did not make the cut, so to speak. Honorable mention goes to Tensai because they came in and pushed him ridiculously. And it was annoying. He's not on the list because that's really stopped and he's fallen from grace down to jobber status faster than a rock. Uh, honorable mention, here's where I get slaughtered. Honorable mention has to go to Rey Mysterio because over the course of my time as a wrestling fan, Rey Mysterio has, at very, very many points, mostly due to WWE's booking, annoyed the shit out of me. Rey Mysterio is a great wrestler. Rey Mysterio is not as great a wrestler or as great an entertainer as the WWE would love to believe that you all believe he is. Is he doing something cool right now? He's helping along Sin Cara, helping somebody else out, which is more than I can say for some people. But 
this, you know, be-all, end-all, littlest dog in the fight, da-da-da-da-da. Come on, please. I like the guy, don't get me wrong, but he annoys the fuck out of me so much. So much. Doesn't make the cut because he's doing okay right now. The last one that gets honorable mention that doesn't really make it onto the list because they aren't in the WWE anymore is none other than Jane Cena herself, Kelly Kelly. The one who in the whole of 2011, her highlight of the year was taking a second rope suplex from Beth Phoenix. My chair is squeaking. But WWE saved me the time and the trouble of having to add her to my list because, oh yes, she is gone. Oh yes, and I smile. And right now we have an awesome triple threat situation going on in the Divas division. Oh, yes. And seeing as I can't do it anywhere else, I will do it here. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Fuck you, Kelly Kelly. Anyways, on to the list. Now, most people will agree with most of this list. The first one is the one that's going to get me the most argument, I guess. I know I'm going to get arguments from Kara. I know if John sees this. I might get a spirited debate out of John, because John is not one of the ones that likes to shit on me, but I know he and I disagree on this one. I don't know what I'm going to get from everybody else. Damien Sandow. I'll say it again. Damien Sandow. The one that is going to drag Cody Rhodes to the depths of the tag team division in their little spiel that they've got going on right now. Now... I don't hate Damian Sandow, I don't wish death upon him, I don't think he's killing wrestling, I, you know, we'll save those uh, clarifications for other people, but he's nothing new, and he's nothing particularly great in the ring, and if he is, WWE hasn't given him a chance to show it. People have come to me over and over and over again, well, Spaz, you gotta see him in FCW, Spaz, you gotta see him in NXT, Spaz, you have to see, you know, what he did anywhere else, I'm not sure if he was in ROH or OVW or whatever else he's been in, I don't watch those companies, because... It goes hand in hand with this belief. When you, no matter where you come from, I don't care if you came from TNA and I watch TNA. If you come to WWE, if you come to WWE, day one in WWE, the first night you walk out on Raw or SmackDown is your first night. And since Damian Sandow's first night, he hasn't shown me anything. His matches, although they're not technically booked like squash matches, feel like squash matches. He had one good match against Sheamus, but let me repeat that, it was Sheamus. Um, he got punked out by DX, because WWE is desperate to give him a rub, and his gimmick is the most recycled gimmick in the world. Coming out in a robe speaking highly of himself and speaking lowly to everybody else, coming out, playing the generic snob. Can I say early days Triple H? Can I say several different heel incarnations of Chris Jericho? Can I say the genius? Can I say Alberto Del Rio? Can I say JBL? Can I say Million Dollar Man? Can I say uh, William Regal at some points? Can I say Wade Barrett at some points? There's nothing original coming out of the mouth of Damian Sandow, who's touted as this this great microphone guy who, you know, people want to see do shoot promos against CM Punk. And I'm like, no, fuck you. You've been around for a cup of coffee. Show me a decent Damian Sandow match in the WWE, meaning Raw or SmackDown. You can't do it. I don't doubt that maybe, maybe, WWE is hiding or holding back some great ring talent that this guy has. And we don't know, because he's been around for a cup of coffee, and that's just it. He's been around for a cup of coffee, and people, there are people out there that want him to be champion. There are people out there that want him to go up against Sheamus, or go up against CM Punk, or Cena, or whatever. It's the same way they bullshit push, De bullshit push Dean Ambrose, and he hasn't even been on Raw yet. I know he's been in FCW, I know he's done some dark matches for NXT, I know he's done dark matches for Raw. But if you're doing dark matches, you don't really exist yet. I'm sorry, I hate to tell you, your, your day number one in WWE hasn't happened yet. And I'm sorry, you don't get handed a world title, even though one of the world titles is completely useless at this point, you don't get handed a world title on your first night for showing up. 
And basically, that's what a lot of people want Damian Sandow to receive. Now he's riding Cody Rhodes' coattails to the Tag Team Championships, and that's disgusting enough. He's nothing special. He's... <clears throat> He's cliche to the point of being annoying, and I don't. And here's the thing: oh, he's a heel. He's supposed to be annoying. He's like Cena. He's like a lot of other people that people don't like. Whatever. Oh well, if you hate him so much, he's getting a reaction, and and, and that means something. No, he's not getting heel heat from me. He's having, you know, get the hell off my TV. I would rather switch over to a soap opera. You're killing the TV time of whoever you're in the ring with. Heat. That's what Damian Sandow is getting. So yeah, number one is definitely Damian Sandow. Now on to the ones that everybody more or less agrees with on some level. Santino Morella. For the rest of these guys, I just feel like saying their name and saying enough said. Santino Morella came in. He was the guy from the crowd. He had the Cinderella story. He won the Intercontinental Championship from Umaga. And it was all fine and wonderful. And at the time, he was showing that he had a great ring skill. And... Go back to that and watch Santino Morella now, and it's like night and day. All the little salutes he does while he's wrestling, and the Cobra bullshit, and the little, you know, constipated power walk he does to the ring. The way he overemphasizes his Italian accent, if he even has a real Italian accent. Nothing about him is good. And it sucks, because he dragged down Vladimir Kozlov to the point of being irrelevant. He is going to... Okay, and I know a lot of people aren't high on Ryder. I will admit, I watch Ryder. I'm a fan of Ryder's because he's fun, not exactly because he's the best character in the world. But he's dragging down Ryder by being stuck in a tag team with him. He is... <clears throat> they've used so many good people like Ziggler, like Miz, just to name two, like Rhodes, I believe, at one point to put him over and all of his goofball bullshit, he ruined the the US title even more than Jack Swagger. And I'm sorry, if Jack Swagger was still in the WWE and not on hiatus or whatever he's doing, he'd be on this list. But he ruined the US title worse than Jack Swagger. He ruined the tag team titles when he held them because it was another one of those dysfunctional tag teams, da 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 Oh, look at us in current day, how time repeats itself. But that's another story for another video. No, nothing he touches is any good. They had him come close to, okay, kayfabe-wise, they had him come close to winning the Royal Rumble. That's disgusting. That is... Royal Rumble is one of the most traditional WWE things we have left. You know, being that King of the Ring is gone and a bunch of other things are gone and Survivor Series is eh, at this point, whatever. Royal Rumble is one of the few things we have left. You bring Santino Morella to the point where you almost have him throw out Alberto Del Rio and win? I know it didn't happen. I know it was never going to happen. But to even present the idea is insulting to everybody involved. Same thing goes with the Elimination Chamber. You get down to Daniel Bryan, who was one of the most entertaining World Heavyweight Champions we've seen in a long time. And now he's doing the bullshit that he's doing. But he was one of the most entertaining World Championships we'd had, or Championship holders we had had in a long time. And they have the last two people in the Elimination Chamber, Daniel Bryan and Santino. Come the fuck on! Honestly, they throw him in the mix for friggin' what the hell was it? What the hell was it? What the hell was it? Money in the bank! What the hell? They have him go over almost as much as friggin' Ryder does in fucking Battle Royals and shit. They have him get the upper hand on people he should never, ever, ever have the upper hand over. Because he's a black hole. He's a credibility black hole. He really, really is. He sucks any credibility and any believability or ability to take any situation or any person seriously away from anything he touches. He's not just like he's not just a zero. He's in the negative. He's absorbing credibility from everybody else around him and it's just it's just a vacuum at this point. So number 2, definitely Santino Morella. Number three, Brodus Clay. Now I know he's supposed to be there for the kids and da-da-da-da-da. My response to that is you have a kid's show. Have Brodus Clay be, like, the Saturday Morning Slam championship. Have him and, and Santino feud over the Saturday Morning Slam championship. It'd be fine. But he's just a big, fat goof who, again, like Santino Morella, has used Ziggler, used Swagger, 
how often do you hear me having sympathy for Swagger, used The Miz, used all kinds of people to get himself over as this big dominant force when all he's doing is getting in there with a big pedo grin on his face with two hookers and shaking his fat around. And... It, <sighs> I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Brodus Clay, I got nothing. He doesn't do anything in the ring. What does he do? He stands there and he runs into people. I've seen more athleticism out of Rikishi. I've seen more athleticism out of Viscera, out of Yokozuna, out of... Uh, I don't know who else. Umaga, Samoa Joe... So this is not a slam on bigger guys and what some might call fatter guys and whatever. It's it's not about that. It's just the fact that he's using the WWE, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll say that. WWE is using the fact that he's a bigger quote unquote fatter guy as the as the root for comedy. And it's not so much putting over Brodus Clay, it's that whoever just lost, lost to this big fat goofball. So it's not putting him up, it's just putting whoever else he's in the ring with down. And the fact that Ziggler managed to make him look like a million bucks for five seconds is a big feather in the cap of Dolph Ziggler. But then again, Dolph Ziggler can make somebody like the great Kali or even John Cena look good. Moving on. Speaking of John Cena, let's first go to the ginger John Cena of SmackDown. Oh, yes. I'm talking about our good old buddy Flaming Mayo, Sheamus. Yes. And uh, Christian Whitehead, this is a shout out to you, kind of, on... Uh, on Facebook there, but uh, uh, she's a big Seamus fan. This is not a knock at her whatsoever. But Seamus is 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 just taking everybody down. He's a goofball. They book him like a heel and treat him like a face, which just pisses everybody off. And basically, let's just admit it, friggin' 18 seconds killed his career. It didn't kill Daniel Bryan's. Everybody's waiting for him to drop the belt. He can't sell for shit. He sells worse than Cena. And that's a fact. Um, he purposely... I th the only way I can say it is he purposely goes out of his way to not sell. Cena just can't. I, I've come to that conclusion and I'm almost coming to terms with it. Sheamus, it, it almost seems at this point, does it on purpose. Uh, his last couple of matches with Alberto Del Rio, he got his arm worked over the whole match and he made sure it was that arm that he did the one arm slam with. So it's kind of like a fuck you, Alberto Del Rio. I'm not going to put you over. Fella, I'm going to put you over here. Um, he, he does nothing. He has a kick. He's got one or two slams. He can tie people up in the ropes. He thinks he's funny and he's not. Um, WWE thinks he's big and he's just, I don't care. I almost hope Big Show wins. Those of you who know how I feel about the Big Show know how much weight that comment carries. At Hell in the Cell, I almost hope the Big Show wins. That's how sick of Sheamus I am. And I will give you five seconds to uh, to guess who the crowning jewel of my shit list is. You got five seconds. No pausing the video to give yourself extra time. You've got a legit five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero. And it's not Big Dick Johnson. Oh, yes, it is John Cena, the one-armed man that is still dominating our WWE champion. Now, I don't need to say a whole lot about John Cena. I've said enough about John Cena. I've got a video series called Cena Apocalypse, for fuck's sakes. And I'm not going to dwell on John Cena because he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve his spot. He deserves to be a, a mid-carder at best. He's not funny. In a lot of ways, he's a wannabe rock. In a lot of base ways, he's a wannabe Austin. And in a lot of ways, he's a wannabe punk. Which is sad, because punk's his rival at the moment. Um, his gimmick is annoying. His Superman shit is annoying. His almost unhuman, like, nothing ever phases me. I will always conquer. I will always persevere. Mannerisms make me want to vomit. I'll be completely honest. And when he has his big comeback from this little gimpy arm bullshit, we are going to have John Cena shoved down our throats all the way to WrestleMania. Oh, yes, we are. I fear for the future of CM Punk. I fear for the future of The Rock, because I think this time around The Rock is going to get buried as well. And while most people there don't give a shit about The Rock anymore, he takes too much money. 
you can't deny that the rock is a leap and a bound in 10 million light years better in the ring more entertaining on the mic and anywhere else than john cena could ever hope in his wildest dreams to be so yes the crowning jewel of the shit list no surprise to anybody is john cena the shit list will be a part of raw reviews and if i do the more structured bit at the end of my pay-per-view reviews the shit list will be a part of that as well just for those people out there that think I'm a little too happy and a little too perky and whatever that I never say anything bad about anything that I'm a big WWE apologist when last year I was the guy that was too hard on the WWE because the YWC loves to flip flop and pancake all over the fucking place yes so you will get your daily dose of negativity with every Raw review from now on. I hope all you fuckers are happy. Buckle up. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep this conversation going. Tell me your shit list. Make a video response. As Alex would say, do what you do. But for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys.